Hi, lady. Hi, lady. Good girl. It's okay. I'll get you some corn. I know you're probably out. Yeah, we're out. Your fawn's there too, huh? Good girl. Yeah, your fawn's not as tolerant of me being out here, is she? I'll be right back. Let's see which one do I got the I keep the corns in the milk jugs. Yeah, that'll get loud. <laughs> Stay away too long, usually. It's weird, all oh, usually one of her fawns stays. She's got twins. There's one. One fawn's a standing right there. It's like, uh, get that corn in her so I can get over there. Hi, lady. We got all the alfalfa cubes out of the feeder this morning. doing this morning lady you're looking good here I'll, I'll step back again that's fine don't have to be too close let you eat Yeah, the other deer must have been here a lot last night because the corn was all gone and alfalfa cubes are all over the ground. They'll chew on them and then they can't, you know, they get a little bits off of it and they drop them. Once Lady and her fawn are done eating, they'll move them back into the feeders eventually. Beautiful morning. It's a little cool again, but it's fine. You can hear the crows and chickadees off in the distance. There was an eagle flying by a little bit ago. Here, fawn 
standard for this paper. Lady, she's uh, been coming around since 2017, and she, uh, when I we first met her, she, her leg was hurt and bleeding. And it bled for quite a while, different times that she was coming around, and it finally healed. But I think the fact that her leg was hurt, she couldn't run as good. It got her to a point where she just gave us a little more leeway on patience on getting to know us and stuff than the others do because she couldn't run that f get away real quick she realized that even though she couldn't get away we never threatened her or, or did anything to to scare her we were always very calm around her and talked to her always talked to her when we come in we come out by her my dad would come in from fishing, come off the, off the dock, and lady would all of a sudden come out of nowhere and follow him to the garage, where he would go get her some corn, bring it over, and she would follow him over every night after he'd come in from fishing, and she does that with me all the time now, too. feel that cold out here but when you're standing holding this uh stabilizer your fingers start getting numb <laughs> so it's colder than i was thinking it was can hear her chewing. <laughs> Deer must love this time of year because it's it's not freezing anymore. There's no snow on the ground. A big thing is there's no bugs. That's one thing that you look out at them in the summertime and it's just like they must be miserable being tortured with the flies and the mosquitoes and the ticks and all that stuff that's why i think deer prefer winter and, and fall you know winter is kind of harsh but for these girls and boys here they've got food all winter long so they're not they never starve there's they've always got something it's not like they have to forage and stuff so Try to keep them, I like to keep them in this area because then they know they're safe. Safer, there's, there are wolves in the area and coyotes and, and the big thing with cars and things like that. Things we can't protect them from, but it's kind of nice to give them a safe haven here. A lot of times they'll bed down along the lake or up. By the hill, where the um, on the hill, where they over on that little wooded area, there used to be a cabin up there. Oh, she heading out, lady. Your fun's still standing over there. She's gonna probably be like, "Where are we going, man? I haven't even gotten there for some food yet." <laughs> my bucket away. <laughs> we'll see you later, lady. Head over into the swamp for a little while.
the road there. They head over into the swamp. A little more protected over there for him. I always wonder where her other fawn is 